Hey, so amazing. Uh, you see how they playing? Uh, live wire. It's all about sports and entertainment. Uh, you don't want to miss it. So official, like you never seen. Keep it going till the whistle blowing from the referee. Uh, everything from highlights and stats. You know that we got to run it back. Whether on the field or the court. You know that this is where it's at. Uh, subscribe, no delaying. Uh, this is live wire. Uh, sports and entertainment. Let's go. All right, what's good, everyone? Welcome to another Live Wire Washington Commanders update. Now, this one is a really good topic because it kind of compared with almost another similar topic in the WNBA. And if y'all wonder where I'm going with it, okay. So, rookie sensation Jaden Daniels has been taking the NFL by storm since week one, two, three, and four with... um. Stellar performance in the last two games. Offense is scoring over 30 points. Um, 33 on Monday night against the Cincinnati Bengals. Some argue, say, well, Cincinnati's not a good team. Their defense is struggling. They're having all these problems. But it's still the Cincinnati Bengals. You got Joe Burrow over there. You got Jamar Chase. You got T. Higgins over there. But when was the last time the Washington Commanders won on a Monday night? Hmm. Exactly. So with that being said, Jaden Daniels went in too. Cincinnati took the win in a dominant fashion. The team dominated. They didn't even punt in that game. Matter of fact, both teams didn't even punt in that game. Um, and at that time, Jaden Daniels and the Washington Commanders had went on, I think, um, I think what 10, 10 or 12 possessions without a turnover. Okay, fast forward to last weekend. They went into a tough Arizona Cardinals, but, you know, an area that Jaden Daniels played at ASU. Um, and some say, well, hey, this is Cliff Kingsbury's revenge. You know, he coached over in Arizona. He coached Kyler Murray when the two didn't get along. Um, but we was wondering how this game was going to play out. We wonder how the Washington Commanders was going to respond. Um, some think it would have been a hangover because they had that great Monday night win. Uh -uh. Not a, not say the least. The Washington Commanders went into Arizona, took care of business in a dominant fashion, especially when the Arizona Cardinals went up seven, zip, and then the Washington Commanders responded and responded and responded and responded. And then of us, the defense showed up. The best part of it, the defense showed up to complement the offense where the offense didn't have to do as much. They had to drive so much of a length of the field to get scores. Now, we go go back two games to where they played the Giants where they did score. They had five, five red zone, um, been in the red zone five times, and they got a number of field goals out of there. And lo and behold, we end up finding our kicker, Seabrook. Now I call him AKK, AKA Sea Breeze. So he um he came in. We won the game on field goals. You know what I'm saying? So, but fast forward, the offense started implementing a little bit more for Jenny Daniels. Started doing a little bit more for Jenny Daniels. Started doing a little bit more. Now, Jenny Daniels has been on a tear with awards, and I say this to compare him to another athlete and to Caitlin Clark or what she has do, done for the WNBA. Now, both of them are my favorite players. You know, I've been on the Jaden James train since, you know, he was at um, LSU. I knew he was going to be the best quarterback in the, in the field. I knew Washington had a chance to get him. I wasn't sold on Caleb Williams, even though he is a hometown kid. I just wasn't sold on him. And I watched him, you know, and I don't, I'm not going to go so much into the history, but nevertheless, so, like I said, Jaden Daniels has been on a tear for the last few weeks. And he has won awards after awards after awards. And I'm about to show you what I mean right here. So, Jaden Daniels by um, Nikki Javala, she said the honors for Jaden Daniels so far this season. He has been Pepsi's Rookie of the Week, not one time, but three times. Week one, three, and four. And the week three and four came to the um, the Cincinnati game and the Arizona Cardinal game. And then on, the, on top of that, he has been named Nickelodeon Valuable Player for week four. 
and Offensive Play of the Week for Week 3 and NFL Offensive Rookie of the Month for September. Now, we're already in October. Guess what? If he has a stellar game against the Browns, that could be another award. He's on track of breaking awards like no other rookie has. And this is on a week-to-week basis. This is not just um, a week here, a week there, or somewhere down the line. This is like week, a week, weeks or weeks of everything for Jaden Daniels. And he's only going to get better. But now it comes to my knowledge because I thought about this. If the Washington Commanders, with a schedule, say he beats the Browns and he goes into Baltimore and they beat, I don't ain't, and they beat the, the Baltimore Ravens in their home. It don't have to be a dominant fashion. It could be a close game, whatever the case might be. But if he was to beat Lamar Jackson, and some say, oh, well, we need to, because you got to think about it. That'd be this is week five. That'd be week six. Can Jaden Daniels win the MVP and the rookie of the year at the same time? I say yes, he can. The thing about it is, Jaden Daniels is breaking records. The team didn't score. And this is where I don't like where media sits here and Excuse me, media sits here and try to downplay Jen and Daniel's accomplishments, try to play downplay what he does. So I'm gonna let you listen to what Stephen A. Smith and um Dan Olosky. Sometimes Dan Olosky had a good taste, but this take is not good. Or what it could be an overreaction, reaction to Jaden and Daniels being an MVV conversation. Yes. It's not an overreaction. He's in yes, a conversation. It yes, it is. Until they go and beat a, a, a really good team, and he plays that way against a really good defense. You're again. not consistent. Like we, You're not consistent. Okay, I, I got, I, this was somebody else who pointed out 82.1% right. completion percentage. That's what you would do, and you would okay, say a rookie doing that. Break. That's true. Being a good team the with hour. a good defense, and then he's going to get in that conversation just like Stroud did last year. Well, top three would be, I would say, Justin Jefferson one. Sam Darnold, two, and probably Josh Allen, Allen, three. Yes. The question isn't, is Jaden Daniels top three, right? It's in the conversation. Off, like eight or nine. Is it an so overreaction? The question was, is it an overreaction Dan to have Daniels? Right now, yes. Dan it's, not Dan yes. it's not an overreaction. It's not an overreaction. He's in yes, a conversation. It yes, it is. Until okay. they go and beat a, a, a really good team. And he plays that way against a really good defense. You're again. not consistent. Like we, you're not consistent. Okay, I, I, I got this was somebody else who pointed out eighty-two point one percent completion percentage. That's what you would do, and you would okay, say a rookie doing that. That's true. Right. Being a good team the with a good defense, and then he's going to get in that conversation just like Stroud did last year. Top three. Me personally, I don't even agree with that. Why he has to be a team with a good defense just to be in a conversation? He's beat a good team. In Cincinnati, whether you want to think Cincinnati is good or not, I mean, what if he beat the Browns? What if he beat Baltimore? I mean, to me, if he beats the Browns, he should be in the conversation. He, uh, this is my thing. If Jaden Daniels goes out and destroys the Browns on Sunday, there ain't no damn way in the world he could not be in the MVP conversation, whether he lose against Lamar, Lamar Jackson or not. Hell, they so they put Patrick Mahomes in the MVP conversation every year just because, guess what? He won Super Bowls. They put Josh Allen in v- MVP conversations just because he's Josh Allen, but he hasn't won anything. Lamar Jackson won it last year because they had the best team in the league, but guess what? He lost in, to when it counts, when it matters the most. Jaden Daniels, and, and before I even finish, and then they turn around because Minnesota's 4 and 0. Remember now, they drafted JJ McCartney over there. J, if JJ didn't get hurt, 
will we be talking about Sam Donald being an MVP conversation? Look what Sam Donald, um, look what they, look what Sam Donald has over there. Then you put Justin Jefferson in MVP conversation. For what reason? You know what I'm saying? Sam Donald is a journeyman quarterback. There ain't no damn way in the world he should be in the MVP conversation. They say Geno, Geno Smith is in the MVP conversation. Well, hell, Geno Smith should have been in the MVP conversation last year. CJ Stroud was in the MVP conversation last year. So you saying that Jaden Daniels has to be a certain is a certain team just to be in it? Y'all put Brock Purdy up there. This is my thing. Jaden Daniels is in the MVP conversation, just like Caitlin Clark was in the MVP's conversation in the WNBA, even though she finished fourth in the MVP voting. But she was in the conversation. They didn't say she was going to win it, but he should be in the conversation. But guess what? If the team continues to win, let me let me break it down to you. If Jaden Daniels beats Cleveland and Baltimore back to back and they go on, they win, they go on a five games, well, they're on a three game winning streak now. If they go on a, a, five, a four game winning streak after this, because let me look at their record real quick, because I want to make sure I'm giving this to you, because this is where these people get in trouble with their nonsense, really. All right. So he got, he got Browns, Baltimore, one, two, three, four, five. He got five games. They only won three. They only lost one game. If he goes eight and one in that stretch, I predict them to go seven and two. You know what I'm saying? I predict them to go seven and two. After the Giants, they got the Steelers, the Eagles, and the Cowboys. Now, that's three tough games. Now, they could win. I, I say two out of that three. Who knows? Who knows? Washington could just be on a tear. We don't know. We don't know what they could do. But say, for instance, now in that stretch of games, I say they could go 7-2 in that game because I do put, reveal that the Baltimore Ravens game is tough. But I did say, I also saying, what if he wins that stretch? He goes 8-1. and one. Say he, he plays the Steelers. They, beat, they lose to the Steelers. I don't think they will. Say they lose to the Eagles. Okay, that's a division game. That's on the Thursday night. That's a division game. Say they lose that game. It's a close game. They lose. All right, you what? Seven and three? Eight and two? In that, in that time frame? Or maybe nine and two? I mean, what? Yeah, eight and two, nine and one? In that stretch? You're going to tell me with almost 10, 12 games in, he's, he's not the leading MVP getter? Especially if he gets his team into the playoffs, has a better record, has the best record in the NFC, he's not in, he's not the MVP, the candidate? I don't believe it at all. My thing is this here, they don't want to – I, for whatever reason, when it comes to a working right now, he's been offensive player of the month for the month. He has through, he has completed 87 passes out of 106. That's 82.1%. He has passed for almost a thousand yards, 900 yards, 897 and only three touchdown passes. He has rushed for 218 with four rushing touchdowns. That's seven total touchdowns he has counted for for this offense. So then he's already been rookie of the week. 70, and check this out. 75% of this season's rookie of the week awards, guess what? It has went to Jaden Daniels. So you're going to tell me that this guy has no clue of being in the MVP conversation at all, but you want to put Sam Dotto in there? Come on. Nah, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. So let's let's do this for let's do this for sheer fact. NFL stats. NFL stats for purposes, since we want to do all of this. 
We want to do this. All right, Geno Smith leading the league and passing a thousand. That's not only that much over Jaden Daniels. Hell, if Jaden Daniels averaged 250 yards, 250 yards passing, he'd probably catch that. Brock Purdy's next. Jared Goff, he just broke a thousand yards. CJ Stroud, barely over a thousand yards. Dak Prescott, barely over a thousand yards. Then you got Russian Derrick Henry leading because he had that monster game the other night. Nico Collins leading the league in receiving. In top in top passing, I don't in passing, I don't see nowhere is Jared Goff. I mean, um, what's the boy name? Sam Donald at all. Don't see him nowhere in the, in the books. Don't see him nowhere. So you can miss me with all that. I think this is a bunch of Reddit for mainstream media, as we all have seen before. I do believe Jaden Daniels is in an MVP conversation. Matter of fact, RG3 has him number two rank. Some have him number four. I put him top five. Stephen A has him on his A list as number five. Had the commanders as number five. I put him number five. He's in that conversation. But if this team continues to win and this team end up having the best record in the NFC, and they storm through they, if they storm through their schedule and lose three games the most in this stretch of games and beat some of the good teams, and I'm talking about the ones that I just named, he's a to me, he is the leading vote getter in the NFL for the MVP. He already solidified himself as the best rookie right now. So the rookie of the year award ain't is no question right now. But to me, that MVP, he could be the first rookie ever to win MVP and rookie of the year in the same year. And don't think that it can't be done. This is your boy, Live Wire Sports Media. Let me know what you think. Keep them bells ringing anytime I drop a hardcore video. Until then, I will have a, a I will be posting a blog later today on more in depth of Jaden Daniels, why he should be rookie of the year. I mean, not rookie of the year, but MVP, end of MVP conversation and winning rookie of the year also. But like I said, at the end of the video, you know how I do. You know what I say. You know what it is. Hey, so amazing, uh, you see how they playing, uh, live wire, it's all about sports and entertainment, uh, you don't want to miss it, so official like you never seen, keep it going till the whistle blowing from the referee, uh, everything from highlights and stats, you know that we gotta run it back, whether on the field or the court, you know that this is where it's at, uh, subscribe, no delaying, uh, this is live wire, uh, sports and entertainment, let's go. Hey.